Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the online, the weekend that changed the world annual conference. We can say that now yeah. because we had one last year and we've got one this year, and we're going to have a fabulous time out with it. Yeah, 2022. Um, can it get any better than 2021? Well, well, we believe so. Yeah, we're looking absolutely. forward to a, a great event. We'll explain a little bit more about what's happening. But what we always do as part of our church life is worship. And that's so yeah. important because it helps us to focus in on the truths of what the scripture teaches and what we've experienced. And this first song we're going to sing expresses the truth that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm-hmm. Luke and I have found that freedom in Christ. Yeah. And that's what the cross is all about. Yeah. It gives us freedom. Yeah. Yeah. from our sin. Yeah. So let's join in and worship together.
It's brilliant, isn't it, that God welcomed us into his family. We were lost, but Jesus found us and has set us free. Our second song brings our focus again onto Jesus and what he did on the cross. And I'm going to share a scripture reading with you. And we'll, after this song, we're going to break bread. So please get some bread and juice ready. This reading is from Luke chapter 24. The crucifixion of Jesus. Two other men, both criminals, were led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, Calvary, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching and the rulers sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And there was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there held insults at him. Are you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? Since we are under the same sentence, we are being punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today, You'll be with me in paradise. And it was about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said that, he breathed his last. So let's spend a few moments then focusing on Calvary. Oh 
the blazing sun shall pierce the night and i will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on jesus face you now to break bread with us and to remember the death of Jesus Christ on the cross for us as we've been singing about. So let's just bow our heads and we'll pray. Heavenly Father we thank you for this special day. We thank you Lord for bringing us together and we just ask Lord that as we break bread together just as you did all those years ago that you'll open up our eyes to see something new about what you've done for us and I ask Lord God that you touch every person watching this tonight, or whenever they do it, in Jesus' name. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it, and he gave it to each of his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. This represents my body given for you. After the supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant, represents, it's a sign of the new covenant, written not just in handwritten notes, but in the blood of Jesus Christ. So we praise God together that he died and shed his blood for us, for the forgiveness of our sins. Yeah, we're focusing in on all that Jesus did for us today. And I thank you that you've been able to join us and to share with us at this weekend. I'm going to share what's going to be happening in a few moments' time. I'm going to introduce our guest speaker. Then tomorrow, after, from 2 o'clock onwards, Dr. Glenn Balfour, the AOG resident theologian, um, will be speaking on the subject that we've given to him, which was, what was Jesus doing between Good Friday and Easter Sunday? It's an interesting theological point that. And then on Sunday morning at 10.30 we have a service online. It's a family service but also a live service here at 10.30 in the morning. And you're welcome to join us online or to welcome us to join us live at the New Life Church on George Street in Wakefield. So we're looking forward to a fabulous time together focusing in on the cross of Jesus Christ. And this next song that Paul's going to just minister to us is one of our favourite songs. It represents what the cross has done for us, for every situation, for every wounded person, for everyone listening out there tonight or today. Jesus is there for you. The cross still stands.
For every disappointment For every broken heart For everyone in darkness A light For every situations a hope the cross still stands the cross still towers his blood still For everyone who's desperate, for everyone who's lost, for everyone who's fearful, a shelter, for every
great ministry song that is. So blessed. Thank you, Paul, for sharing that song with us. Well, our speaker tonight is Luke Crompton. Luke is one of the pastors here at New Life Church. He is an incredible speaker, has got fantastic communication skills. And I know that he's going to share something that's on his heart, but we've given him the title, What's so Good About Good Friday? So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say, and I'll show you that wherever you are, give Luke an incredible <laughs> welcome. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the weekend that changed the world. It's my pleasure to bring us uh, some thoughts on uh, the evening session. And I just want to talk about this evening, uh, what's so good about Good Friday? What's so good about Good Friday? Because usually when we use the word good, it's because something was good. Uh, so, for instance, you know, that was a good meal this is a good coffee even though this is coming at you uh, at the evening uh, i'm filming this in the morning so don't worry i'm not drinking coffee late at night or that was a good movie or we even greet each other don't we good morning we you know with a, hopefully with a smile on our face anyway well people have asked this question for hundreds of years you know why is good friday called good friday what's so good about Good Friday. And there are some answers as I've Googled around the internet because admittedly, I didn't really know properly. I had some ideas and I'm gonna kind of talk about my perspective on that, of course, today. But I had kind of some ideas of why Good Friday was called Good Friday. Some say that Good Friday was called Good Friday because good here means holy. So it actually means Holy Friday. Uh, now, if you know anything uh, about the word holy, it basically means uh, kind of sacred, uh, set apart, you know, by God, set apart for God. So Holy Friday. And there's a good argument for that because it was a Holy Friday. It was a sacred Friday. It was a Friday that was like no other Friday. It was set apart uh, for God and by God. So it was a Holy Friday, there's no doubt about that. Or some say, actually, that Good Friday is a bit of a confusion because uh, they've added an O, and actually, it shouldn't be Good Friday, it should be God's Friday. And yes, you could argue that also, that it was indeed God's Friday, because it was God's Son who died on the cross. God's Friday, Holy Friday, God's Friday. But let's presume that actually when it says Good Friday, it means that it was a good Friday. It means that it was a good day. It means that we can look at it and be happy. But you could think in your mind, well, Good Friday, that's when Jesus died. What's so good about death? What's there to be happy about, about Jesus dying? Me and my wife, uh, Jana, uh, we watch The Passion of the Christ every Good Friday. Just to, again, think about the cross. Think about that Good Friday of everything that Jesus went through for us. It's a graphic movie and I wouldn't recommend that children uh, watch it just yet. But the truth of it is, with Jesus on Good Friday, he was, he was badly beaten. He was spat upon. He was ridiculed. He was rejected by the crowd they chose a murderer over him they placed a crown of thorns upon his head digging into his in, into his skull they made him carry his own heavy rugged cross they pierced his hands and his feet and of course in the end he was crucified and we asked this question in um when we were teaching lessons this week around schools in Wakefield, does anyone know how you die from crucifixion? And there are all kinds of uh, answers. Actually, you die from crucifixion from being suffocated because there's, there's just no energy, there's no strength in you to be able to pull yourself up to breathe. So it was a horrible death. It was a horrible day for all that, for all that pain and suffering. You could argue after going through all that, what's so good about that? And the answer is that, frankly, nothing is good 
about that. Except for this. Except for this. That in all that, in all that horrible event, in all that pain, in all that suffering that Jesus Christ went for, went, went through, it was on Good Friday that we can say it was a Good Friday because of everything that he's accomplished for us. It's his accomplishment that we can say that it's a Good Friday. Well, we can look at it and say that that was a good day for us. That was a good day for us. So I just want to spend some time unwrapping and going over again some things that we that we know, but we, we forget what actually Jesus Christ has accomplished for us. And actually, I probably couldn't cover half or even a, a percentage of what is going on at the cross because the cross as you know, is, is so good, is so wonderful, is so powerful. First point then, of why Good Friday was a Good Friday. It was a Good Friday because we have redemption. It was a Good Friday because we have redemption. Ephesians 1, 7 talks about this. 1 Corinthians 1, 30. Colossians 1, verse 14. Titus 2, 14. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19. You can head there if you want to pause the video. You can do this. It's not live. You can pause it and uh, head to those scriptures if you like. Redemption. A mate of mine, um, I've not seen him for a while, but he's... He's always a dear friend of my heart. I think of him often. Uh, when he when we were when he was younger, he was pretty wasteful with his money. I hope he's uh, kind of uh, uh, doing okay in that area now. But he was pretty wasteful with his money. I don't know how. I don't know how he wasted it. But anyway, but he needed uh, some cash one day, and he worked. He worked pretty well. But he needed some cash one day. So what he did was. He took his beloved PlayStation to a cash converter. Now, you know you're in trouble because he loved his PlayStation. And he took his PlayStation to the cash converter, sold it for whatever. I don't know how much it was. A week later, this is true. A week later, he bought back the same PlayStation from cash converter for double the price that he sold it for. That's just how it works. They buy it for half, they mark it up. He bought it back and it was sad. And I'm, don't quote me on this, but I think he might have done that with one or two other things. He bought it back. He redeemed his PlayStation. And that's what redemption means, actually. It means to buy something back that was once yours. And Jesus on the cross, on this Good Friday, redeemed us. He bought us back. Bought us, didn't just bring us back. He bought, he paid the price for us to come back to God. I love this passage and I talk about this passage when I share about the value, the value of you, the value of me to God. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed, that you were bought back from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. But you, you were bought back with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. defect. The Greek word actually goes a little bit deeper than just buying back. It, it means the payment of a ransom. It's like as if we'd been... Uh, there is a film called Ransom. Uh, I think it's got Mel Gibson in, but anyway. Um, but it's like as if we've been abducted, we've been kidnapped, we've been stolen from God, of course, from, from the devil. He's stolen us. He's a thief. He's come to, to seek and kill and destroy. We know that uh, scripture. And there's a ransom to get us back. There's a price to get us back. And the only price... The only way that that ransom could be paid, the only way for us to be, again, taken from the devil and brought, brought back to God was through the precious, priceless blood of Jesus Christ. 
It was only through his blood that we could be redeemed, that we could be rescued, there's another word, that we could be delivered, there's another word. It's only through his blood could we find redemption. It was a good Friday because we have redemption. It was a good Friday because we have freedom. We have freedom. Galatians 5 talks about this. Romans 6 talks about this. John 8, 36 talks about this. Luke 4, verse 18. Jesus talks about this. It was a good Friday because we have freedom. One of Jesus' missions on earth was to set the prisoners free. That's what he said in Luke 4, 18, when he stood up in front in the temple. You know, he was reaffirming that the prophecy from Isaiah had been fulfilled. He said that, in fact, that this, this prophecy has been fulfilled. I'm here. I'm here. And one of the things that he said, of course, to proclaim the good news, but to set the captives free, to set the prisoners free. Free. Now, he wasn't talking actually about, you know, prisoners, you know, for, for crimes and, and stuff like that. Um, of course, we love Barry, don't we? We love Barry Woodward who goes into prisons and we know people in our church fellowship that go into prisons and we love that. And Jesus is uh, also uh, reaching those people as we speak as well. But he's talking about a prisoner of sin. See, before we met Jesus, we were all prisoners of our sin. And Romans 6 talks about that, that we are slaves to sin, that we are prisoners of our sin. And again, that, that Christ has rescued us, that Christ has redeemed us, that Christ has freed us from the bondage, from the chains of sin. In fact, he powerfully exclaimed in John 8, 36, he said, about himself so if the son if i set you free you will be free indeed you'll be free indeed he's saying that there's going to be no doubt about your freedom from sin you see because as we've talked about before there's a ransom there's there's a wage there's a debt that has to be paid and guess what i paid the price in fact, Jesus' last words on Good Friday, when he said that it is finished, is a Greek word. I may not pronounce this well, but tetelestai, and it means paid in full. The debt is paid in full. The sin, the debt which is sin, or the sin which is debt, whatever, is paid in full. It's done. It is finished. I remember my old pastor talking about the devil. The accuser is another name for the devil. And he's in a courtroom with Jesus. And uh, this is obviously just uh, kind of an imaginative uh, thing. And the devil is trying to, you know, it's kind of like judgment day or whatever. And the devil's trying to, you know, bring up our sins, you know, you know, Luke. Look at what Luke did here. And Jesus says that's paid for. And then he said, the devil says, no, but look at what he did here. And Jesus said, that's paid for. And he goes on and go on. And each time Jesus said, it's paid for. You're wasting your time because the debt has been paid in full. Hallelujah. The sin, the debt that we had has been paid in full. Hallelujah. And we are free from the debt. We are free from sin hallelujah wow wow the awesome thing is that we're not just free from the debt of sin but we can also be free from the weight the stronghold the entanglement of sin it doesn't mean that we won't sin because we will sin and we do sin you know none of us are perfect that's the reason why jesus came but it but it 
But but yes, we will sin, but it doesn't mean it means now that sin doesn't have to dominate our life. Again, that we're no longer slaves to sin. So we're not just free, but we are free indeed. We are free indeed. Indeed is not two separate words. It means indeed. It's surely, surely you are free. Wow. Good Friday was a good Friday because we have freedom. Hallelujah. We have freedom. And kind of similar on this theme, but Good Friday was a good Friday because we have a fresh start. We can have a fresh start. You know, there's great power in a fresh start. There's great power in a fresh start. In wiping, again, we're talking about debt, in wiping the debt clear, in wiping the debt clean, in wiping the slate clean. Again, all our wrongs written on a picture in a whiteboard or a blackboard or whatever, or a piece of paper. And Jesus comes along and just wipes it all clear. We're completely restored. We have a completely fresh Start. Here's a technical analogy that may go over your head. But if you have a mobile or a computer or any computer device, sometimes it can get a little corrupted and all the files get a little bit, um, you know, again, corrupted is probably the best word, or there's a virus on it, or the system's just broken or whatever. And we can have the option to restore it to factory settings. Oh, it feels so good. My uh, father-in-law, actually, when I was over in um, Canada, uh, my phone was fine, but he said, I've got, I've got a phone, like, I'm wondering if you need it. And it was a bit of a, a better phone than mine. So I was like, sure, you know, if you're, you're giving it away, thank you. Uh, but I restored it to factory settings, and it was just brand new. It was a, like a, a brand new phone and, and I've done it before on my computer if I've if there's some issue again with something you can restore it back to its factory settings basically you restore it to how it was originally made you know something Jesus restored us to factory settings he restored us back to how we originally were made. Do you remember Adam and Eve before they first sinned? That is how Jesus, that's how Jesus restored us too, as if we had never sinned almost. He restored us back to how we were always meant to be. He gave us a fresh start. He gave us restoration. And when I think of fresh start, when I think of restoration, I think of Peter. You know, I can relate so much to Peter. A bit rough around the edges. I don't know. Probably came from a place similar to Bolton. <laughs> Voted one of the worst places to live, apparently, quite recently in Nepal. But anyway. But I always think of Peter when I think of restoration. When I think of a, of a fresh start. Because... Peter had a few fresh starts, actually. He was rebuked once or twice, but he was a good guy. He was a good, he had a good heart. The first time that he had a fresh start was when he met Christ for the first time. He was fishing. He was a fisherman by trade. And Jesus called him. He changed his name, in fact. And again, he was a fisherman and he said that you won't fish, but you'll be a fisher of men. You'll help people, uh, you'll fish for people and you'll bring them into the kingdom of God. But then we know about Peter. We know on Good Friday this day that he denied Jesus three times. He loved Jesus. He knew Jesus, you know, for those three years that Jesus ministered. But he denied even knowing him. He denied even knowing him three times. And he thought he was done. 
He thought it was done for. He thought that again his ministry was over. He thought his relationship with God was over again. He thought that he couldn't be redeemed. He thought that he could not be restored. But fresh start number two. He meets the risen Christ. He meets the risen Jesus Christ. And I love that picture, don't you? That that he that Jesus comes along and he cooks them breakfast. Wow. God. The risen Savior comes along to his friends, to his disciples, and he cooks them breakfast. And Peter is restored. He's forgiven. And Jesus gives him a nudge again into his purpose. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. 2 Corinthians 5.17, what a beautiful verse. It talks about the fresh start that we have in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone, no matter who it is, no matter what you've done, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. They are a new creation. The old is gone, the debt is paid, and the new has come. In Christ, we are brand new, brand spanking new. We are washed clean, and we have a whole new agenda. We are spiritually born again here's there's another one that we are that, that that we've been made alive it was a good friday because we've been made alive we were dead the bible says we were dead in our sins but now we're alive in christ we're born again by the spirit of god you know we can have a a fresh start because we have a new spirit within us a heart of stone the bible talks about this you know, a, a replacement, a heart transplant, a heart of stone that is replaced with a heart of flesh. Again, the Holy Spirit, a new spirit, a fresh Holy Spirit, a fire, a wind and water welling up inside of us. Hallelujah. It was a good Friday because we have a fresh start. It was a good Friday because we are reconciled back to God. It's kind of similar to being redeemed, but it's actually slightly different. It was a good Friday because we have reconciliation back to God. Lots of Bible verses, Colossians 1 verse 20, Romans 5 verse 10, 2 Corinthians 5 18, 21. And reconciliation speaks about relationship. You know, when two people have fallen out, reconciliation is restoring that friendship. But but deeper still with God, this relationship, this friendship, Romans 5.10 says that actually, while we were enemies of God, it wasn't as if just the relationship was broken and, you know, you go that way. We were enemies of God. We were enemies of God. It says, while we were enemies of God, we were reconciled, does that word, to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? We were enemies of God. Just get your head around that. We were enemies of God. We hated God, subconsciously or consciously. Some people consciously hate God, don't they? You know, we hated God subconsciously or consciously, whatever. But even when we hated him, even when we were enemies, even when we were completely that way and God was that way, God went out of his way in sending his son to die for us so that we could be reconciled back to him, so that we could have this wonderful companionship with him so that we can have this beautiful relationship with him. It's so awesome, isn't it? That God was so concerned about us. That God was so passionate about us. That he loved us with, again, the highest form of love, agape. That even when we were sinners, that even when we were his enemies, even when we hated him, Jesus died for us. Jesus died for us to bring us back 
to God. To buy us back to God. But to bring us back into that relationship. Into that companionship with God. 2 Corinthians 5.18 verse 19. All this is from God. In other words, God made the move. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting sins against them. And he has committed to us this message of reconciliation. God made the move. And his move was Jesus. His move was Jesus. Good Friday was a good Friday because we have reconciliation, because we have been reconciled back to God. And you know something? This friendship, this companionship, this relationship is not just for here and now. We thank God that it's for here and now, that, that we can know that Jesus is with us, that we can know that God is with us right now. But it's not just for the here and now. It's for forever. It's for eternal life. And it was a good Friday because we have eternal life. John 10, 28, 30. 1 John 5, 11, Romans 6, 23. John 3, 16. And there's plenty more where that came from as well. John 3, 16. For God, soul of the world. Remember, God made the move. For God, soul of the world, that on Good Friday, he gave his one and his only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever, whoever believes in him shall not be lost, shall not perish but have eternal life, everlasting life, forever life. Because as we've talked about, sin is defeated for us. Therefore, death is defeated. The debt is paid. The debt is paid. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ. How awesome is that? That death has been defeated. And he proved that, didn't he, on Easter Sunday by, in fact, himself coming back to life. Who knows what happened in between Friday and Sunday? You'll have to check out tomorrow's session. And obviously, Kevin will bring that resurrection message that he's not here. He's risen. And we're looking forward to that. And that's why it is a good Friday, because we look to the Easter Sunday as well, don't we, that Christ has been resurrected. And we too will be resurrected. Hallelujah. We will live with Jesus forever and ever and ever. And copy and paste the word ever and ever and ever, because that's what Jesus Christ has done for us on that good Friday. Of course, one day we will physically die unless the Lord comes back. But here's what Jesus says about that. He says this, I am the resurrection and the life. Let me say that again. And I want to speak that powerfully into your life that you will believe it in your heart. Jesus says this, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, though they die, will die. Yet shall they live. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection and the life. It was a good Friday because we have eternal life. It was a good Friday because we have redemption. It was a good Friday because we have freedom. 
and a fresh start and restoration. It was a good Friday because because we've been reconciled back to God. And it was a good Friday because we have eternal life. And no one can take that from us. No one can take that redemption from us. No one can take that freedom from us. No one can take that reconciliation, that relationship with God from us. And no one can take eternal life from us because the cross is too powerful. The cross is too good. Don't doubt it for a minute. That Good Friday was not a good Friday. Not just for me, but for you. Good Friday was a good day. Good Friday was a good Friday. Hallelujah. And we can smile upon that day because of everything that Jesus Christ has done for you and done for me. Hallelujah. We're going to uh, finish by singing a wonderful song about a wonderful Savior. It talks about everything. It talks about a lot of what I've just spoke about this evening. But he is a wonderful Savior. Let's praise Jesus with all our hearts, with our spirit, with our soul, with everything that we have again. Because we remember Good Friday. We remember everything that he's done for us. God bless you. I hope this message has inspired you. I hope it's uplifted you, encouraged you, challenged you. I hope that you again have encountered God in a new way. I hope again that if you're not a believer, if, you, if, you, if you've listened to this and you don't know Jesus Christ, I hope that everything that I've said that you can you can make Good Friday a Good Friday for you, that you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. For the, Jesus died for you. He didn't just die for Christians. He died for you. And if you want to know him in a real way, or if you want more kind of information or, or help in going through what it is to be a Christian, what it is to give your life to Christ, what it, what the Good Friday is all about, even we can go deeper still with you. If you if you want that, get in touch with us. Don't hesitate to get in touch. We'd love to chat to you. But for the rest of us, let's just be reminded that Good Friday was a good Friday. Let's not forget the power of the cross. Let's not forget the, the good news, the gospel uh, that we have. Okay, <laughs> preaching again, but let's sing. Let's worship together. Wonderful Savior. God bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend.
show forth your glory, ways that will end in heaven above. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, you are so near, so precious to me. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior. Glories untold. I will be like you. 